Yo, what's up? It's your boy Lil Zane. You're tuning in to Hip Hop Weekly. <laughs> I'm Crystal Ketchum with Hip Hop Weekly, and my guest today needs no introduction. You've seen him on Fighting Temptations with Beyonce, Dr. Doolittle 2 with Eddie Murphy, and his first album, Young World the Future, sold over 300,000 copies in his first week. Lil Zane, how are you, sir? What's good? How you doing? I'm good. Yeah. Now, over 15 years in the game, people are still saying your name. How does that feel? It feels like a blessing. It feels good. Yeah. So now, good. you entered this rap game at the mere age of 15 and 16. It's 15 or 16, right? Yeah. What was that like? I mean, it was just fun, fun, fun. You know, I didn't really know what I was doing at the time, but I was just enjoying it. You know what I mean? I always enjoy life, so I was just enjoying it, going step by step. But learned a lot in that little bit of time, too, so it was dope. So what was the music industry, what was it like back in that time? Were you assigned to Bad Boy, right? Um, no, I was signed actually to Priority Records. Priority Records. Yeah, worldwide, actually worldwide entertainment um, and through Priority Records, yeah. Now, back in the 90s, early 2000s, most artists would say they were jipped off by their record label. Would you say that? What was your situation like? I mean, oh my God, I swear I thought my <laughs> phone was off. Hey, listen, I don't, my bad about that. I think um, my situation was more like there was a... I think my first album was really, really, really dope. Um, everybody was excited. And I think um, the second album, the label went through some changes. So when you, anytime you're working on the second album and the label, I think Priority got bought by Cap Capital at okay. the time during my second album. So I think anytime you're caught up in a, um, a label buyout and you're in the middle of your sophomore album and I was switching management at the time, I think um, everything just got kind of mixed up lost in the sauce you know what i mean so and and when you are artists and you don't have management the proper management around you and the label switches like that it's kind of like they don't even want to deal with it really it's like you mm. know what if you don't have the he ain't got to stay together let me move on to the next and i think that's when um they bought chingy and Ludacris and them in right after that so you know what i mean i just i, I don't think i got jib because i made money i think i just um i just got in a situation where it was just a yeah, it was a buyout, and any artist in the middle of that could get lost in the shuffle. You know what I mean? So after that, did is that when you made your decision to go independent and start your own record label? What? Um, no, actually, um, <clears throat> actually, what I did was I, I, I think I signed another deal with Capital. Um, signed another deal with no, no. You know what? That's when I went independent. I think after that situation, um, I got my papers away from Capital, and I chose to take that money and I um I went with a small independent out of Texas and um I put my third project out was called The Return. I put that out and um I did really good independent. Like that's when I first learned the independent game, I think. On my first album independently, I probably sold like about fifty, sixty thousand copies. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's not bad at all. That's a lot of bread for independent. And I, I had never seen that much money like from the label, you know what I'm saying? I had seen money. So you made more independent than you did with the label. I think I did wow. because as far as, cause I did movies, which was good money and I did a lot of touring, but as far as that label deal, the me being signed to party, I don't think no artists really make no money like that unless you sell 10, 20 million copies, you know what I'm saying? So um, most of my money came, I think, when I went independent and just started touring and started doing more films. I think that's how most of my money came. Now, going independent, that can't be easy because at this point, you're doing a lot on your own. What did you yeah. learn from going independent? Um, I learned from going independent that <clears throat> your job never stopped. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You get a 24-hour hustle. like It's back to back. Um, you got to learn more faces. When you're just an artist, you're just moving and Hey, what's up? Boom, boom. But you got to start learning names and faces and making phone calls. You know what I'm saying? I make a lot more phone calls than when I was just an artist. Being an artist and a CEO, it's like I'm more hands on. And um, I want to know what's going on with the merchandising, what's going on with the touring, what's going on with the with the royalties, with the mechanicals, and mechanical, like everything. You know what I'm saying? The publishing, the just everything. I'm more into that, you know, the stream and the you know, the writing credits, the, you know, I'm more, I'm more into the business side of it now. So speaking of writing credits, did you ever write for anybody else during the course of your career? Oh yeah. I started out as a writer. I started out writing for, um, I wrote for Puff, AKA Diddy. Um, I wrote for... What songs? Um, I wrote for 
wrote on the second album, The Forever, the Forever album, Angels with Dirty Faces. I wrote that. I wrote a gang of songs they paid me for, but they necessarily didn't use. But I think he used like two of them on that album. Um, of course, I wrote with 112. Um, who else, man? Romeo. I wrote for Romeo. Um, who else? Um, I wrote with Charlie Baltimore. Um Wrote something for Charlie Baltimore. Um, who else? I can't name all of them, but they wrote for themselves too, of course. But I just, you know, added my spice to it. Okay. Now, at some point in your career, I heard that other people were writing for you, especially coming in at such a young age, 16. Yeah. When so I, who were writing at the beginning of your career? Who was writing for you? When I first came in the game, I had um, I had people like, um, I was really young. So I came in the game. I think I came, I got my first record till I was like 12, 13. I was signing the RCA records, so um, I had Eric Sermon writing for me. I had Too Short writing for me. I had Naughty by Nature writing for me. Um, Biggie, Trench used to write what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Trench and Benny and uh, shout shout out to Ill Town. Um, I had um, some people from the Bad Boy Camp writing for me. Um, Puff and Biggie was submitting songs for us. When I say for me, I was in a group. You know what I mean? So I had a group. It was three of us. Um, we was called Chronic Kids, rapping on new ideas and concepts. It was like. Around the same time, Dr. Dre dropped the first Chronic album, so we thought we was badasses, so we wanted to, we gonna call ourselves the Chronic, you know what I'm saying? Like, what happened but, to the Chronic? Um, The Chronic just, you know, once again, when you sign to a label, they give you all this money up front, and then sometimes it's just not not a good management situation, I think it was, um, you know, we were young at the time too, I think... Um, I was really, I was really the only one that was just really, really into it. I think the other one, my brother and my cousin, it was kind of just going along with it. And as they got older, like in the middle of our deal, they started wanting to do other things. Like um, one wanted to play sports, one wanted to, I think one wanted to. Um, my brother's really educated, so he wanted to be like in the management. Like young, he wanted to be on the money side. So I just always wanted to be the one on the mic and on the stage. So it kind of just fizzled away like that but I just kept going and that's when I ran into 112 like five years later I ran into them and you know they put me on the Anywhere song so it just kind of had it just kind of fizzled away and I started I started doing my solo thing now you mentioned 112 a lot what's your relationship like with them now my relationship they're coming back so could yeah, that be another my, hit my, in the making soon I mean I think me and 112 first of all it's always going to be a high level of respect for 112 because they brought me in the game. You know what I'm saying? They showed me the ropes. Um, but as far as us doing music, again, you know what I'm saying? It's up to them. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm really like, I'm really on this wave. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, when you got R&B groups like that, you're like, they classic. You know what I'm saying? So I will be blessed to do another song with them. But, you know, I think just right now where my music is at and where their music is at, it's probably two different two different things right now because my music is like music wise where are you at you're older wise, you have I'm, kids so how's I'm, your music evolved but music wise it's like i'm i'm still you know i'm still young at heart and i just be around a lot of you know a lot of young people so like my music is more like trap soul you know what i'm saying like 112 is in church you know what i'm saying i'm in the trap you know what i'm saying so like it's a little trap soul a little you know a little you know, R and B. I'm more R and B now too. You know what I mean? Like I sing a lot on this new album. You know what I mean? So it's a whole This is switch. new for you, right? Yeah, it's Singing? a whole different genre. It's like yeah. I got some songs with Bando Jones I'm working on and some songs with Lil Scrappy. I'm in talks with R. Kelly right now. I'm doing a song with Sean Garrett. Um so I got You and some... R. Kelly got a project coming out with yeah, I can't R. Kelly on the raps, but shout out to R. Kelly, man. Like I've been working with Kells on some stuff and um Sean Garrett, like I said and you know, I'm just anxious to 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 let people hear what this new project sound like. So, what made you want to tap into this R and B side all of a sudden? Is I mean, I think I grew up more R and B than rap. I love rap, you know, so I could probably rap better than I could sing. But um, you know, what I mean, I just I grew up on R and B when I was younger, like my mom and my dad, and listening to like Frankie Beverly and Mays, and you know, what I'm okay. saying all them old school Marvin Gaye's and. You know what I mean? Um, Usher, I grew up, you know what I mean? Usher used to be real tight growing up. So I grew up, you know what I'm saying, like wanting to be. I just think singers always had the life. Like, 
You know, singers got all the girls. Singers. Damn, People will say that about rappers. That's the funny I mean, part. Rappers, we just, you know, we it's we, you know, that I got that side too. But I just wanted to, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to just, you know, diversify myself. I wanted to push myself to something else. Like I didn't just want to come back because I've been gone for a minute working on this project, so I didn't want to come back like years later with like the same thing. I wanted to come back with something new. Like, you, if you ain't seen somebody in 10 years and you see them, you want to, you're like, what's new? Yeah. Like, and so I'm like, yo, you can play football, him. but now I'm great in basketball. You're going to be like, yo, like, when yeah. I left him, he was a, 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 a star quarterback, but now he's the star. You know what I'm saying? It's just showing diversity. I think that's what this album's going to do. Just put me in that category as an entertainer. Like, Michael Jackson was like an entertainer. You know what I'm saying? He wasn't just a singer. He was an entertainer, so I just want to be known as an entertainer at the end of the day, not just a rapper. So, most of your fans want to know, what caused this break? You took such a long... What were you doing during the break? I think during that break... I mean, first of all, I'm going to be honest. I did not mean to take that break that long. But like, that wasn't on purpose. But if you understand, sometimes it's the business. Sometimes... And then let's... let's let's Okay, first of all, it's the business. You know, like, the business changes, and you got to get with the new wave, like... There wasn't no Instagram. There wasn't no Twitter. There wasn't no no right. social media. So I had to get with that. I had to learn that. You know what I'm saying? Boom. Now, you, I don't think you're going to go anywhere without that nowadays. So I had to learn that. But then on the life side of it, I came out so young. Like, I just think I had That's to, true. like, like, I tell people it's crazy. And I don't glorify, like, doing bad stuff. But, like, I tell people, like, I started trapping after I started rapping. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's backwards, really. Because, like, Why? things got... Because you were making money, you know I mean, I was like... making money, but still, at the same time, when you're making money and, like, the label got you in contracts and you can't really move like you want to move, you know what I mean? Sometimes you, like, you don't want to just be broke. If you just got money sitting there and it just... None, none being done with it. You start trying to think of ways to make it keep going. You know what I'm yeah, saying? So I feel like, like again, it's not to glorify, it and I don't, you know, I don't, I don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I just feel like, at the end of the day, I started, um, you know, I just started um trying to think of different ways to 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 stay to stay afloat while I was going through the music change, and then um. You know, then I just got, I got wind of it. I moved back to Atlanta and um, I was like, you know what? You can't be in the streets and in music. And you're a little Don't thing. You're a little thing. You can't, you can't just do a crime and people just not going to know who you are. So I was like, you know, let me bring myself back to Atlanta and um, get focused. You know what I'm saying? So I came back to Atlanta and I started just being in the studio every day more and more. So, you know, I think it's just the life side. I just think at the, because the answer to your question is just like at the end of the day, I just was so young and I had did so much at such a young age, like that you weren't out of stuff to talk about. You know what I'm saying? So you had to, I had to live life for a minute. I had kids. I mean, I was, you know, dibbling and dabbling in the, in the movie stuff and just going through life growing up. So once I figured life out, I was like, you know what? It's time to get back in the so studio. So at that point, was there any, did you have a mentor to guide you? Like, don't um, do this or let me help you save your money. Let me show you how this works. Did you have another anybody? another thing. That's another thing. I think um, I had God. <laughs> I definitely had God. I think he's the biggest mentor. Um, but um, one thing about me, I think um, my mentors was my homies in the streets. You know what I'm saying? Like, So music-wise, you didn't have anybody looking out for you? I don't feel like I did because wow. I feel like, you know, when you have people like Bow Wow had Jermaine, you know what I'm saying? Um, who else? You had Bow Wow Jermaine. You had... Even podcast Shug, you know what I'm saying? You um or had Digital Underground. He had somebody that was in the game he could go to, like um um who else? Um, you know, Mace had Puff. You got when you got or or not even Mace and Puff, T I and Derek Jeter, you know what I'm saying? Right, that's it, right? The Jer Derek Jeter, his manager. Like whoever his manager is, I think that when you have those partnerships for a long time, like like the Missy and the Timberlands, I think that your career just goes better because you got somebody that's actually looking out for you. I think that a lot of times I had to kind of go through bumps, like mm -hmm. ups and downs by myself. Like the people that I was down with, they wasn't really the in the best interest of me. But you could tell Jermaine is really in the best interest of Bow Wow. You could tell. But you were around though, so I'm surprised Jermaine didn't, you know, take you. I mean, you because in the people, honestly, the people I came in the game with, I think that, you know what I'm saying, like, 
I was so loyal to them, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And I think that I don't even think I would even look at Jermaine if he did try to help. Because I was a kid and I was, you know, I'm I'm more like, I'm family orientated. So when you, came, when you come in the game with a team and y'all say, y'all grind for three years to try to get something. And once y'all get it, you know what I'm saying? Once y'all get it and y'all get the deal, you like, okay, this is my team. Anybody else that come around talking, we ain't even hearing them right now. So especially when you're young, that's how you moving. But... Then when you when your team start acting crazy and things start getting mm -hmm. shady, you start thinking of conversations like, "Damn, I was with you, man. I was with such and such. I should have asked him what was up right then." Like, but you you live and you learn. You know what I'm saying? But I think um, all my relationships now are great. Like, I don't think I burned any bridges. I don't think. So I, would you say that is something you regret? Just being loyal to people that really didn't have you have I mean, your best. You know, I don't regret anything. I think I just like I said. I just think you live and you learn. I think you can't really be mad at yourself for not knowing something. I think if you do it again constantly after you got, you know what I mean, I think then that's just crazy. But I think you in life, you just live and learn. You know what I mean? You can't sit back and, you know, look at nothing like, damn, I should do this, whatever. It's just, you know what I mean? You just keep it moving. You know, I, I think I bounced back pretty good. <laughs> you know what I mean? I think it's life is good right now. So, I think. I'm so, gonna... you have a new single coming out. Yes. We Lady. It comes out 420 actually that's tomorrow. That's favorite holiday. Yeah. yeah, yeah so that's yeah, not yeah. ironic. Yeah, that was, I mean, that was just a blessing too to have it drop on that day because you know how the iTunes go. Like, if you don't put it at a certain time, it don't drop at a certain time. So I think, yeah, it's a perfect day. That means, now, Scrappy, yeah. Lil Scrappy is also on this single. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Are you guys friends? How yeah, did that's, that work? That's, that's my dog right there. Like, we, we've been kicking it for like years my, when I first started, like, and like since like 2000. So, um, yeah, I've been my dog for a minute. So, we we got a hell of songs. We got like 10, 20 songs. So, will he be on your new album as well? Is this thing going to go on your album? Um, Possibly, yeah. I think it should. Yeah. When can we expect the album? On the album, will be out like, you know, summertime, you know, middle of the summer, beginning of the summer, some. You know, we ain't, don't got dates no more. We're just dropping. Whenever I feel like the song. Is this like out. a concept project? What, what, what can fans expect? Um, it's a, I think it's a. I wouldn't say a concept project. I say it's just like a real project. It's like a life because it's called Life I Live. So, you know, it's Pound L I L. I think it's just a um, it's a real project, man. I think you're just gonna and it's and it's really diverse. You are gonna get some, you gonna get some of everything on there. You know what I mean? It's gonna be dope. Okay, so now what I've noticed, and I'm pretty sure most of your fans notice, you hang around a little scrappy a lot and around CBJ. Okay. Are you in talks of being on the next season <laughs> of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta? Is that something you interested in? I mean, I think that's dope. You know what I mean? But just to be honest, I think um, I think my fans would love to see me on there. But I got to sit down and talk to Mona, man. We gotta. We so gotta if she talk, came man. at you with the right contract, you would do it. No, they came at me before. Oh wow! They came at me before. You know so why'd you turn down the first time? Because I just didn't understand it, you know what I'm saying? I didn't understand it, and 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 I'm a very private person. Like, I didn't want, I didn't know if I was ready to just like air everything out like that. Like, you know, I had cameras all on my face all day, but you know what I'm saying a lot of. But you got to give the fans what they want to see. So it's like, so you I've really been, let your fans in everything, every part of your life now. Yeah, I started social media lizing more. You know what I'm saying? And letting them in a little bit, and once you do that. And you start, you know, Instagramming more and going live more. You start just realizing, like, people just want to see how you live regular. You know what I'm saying? So it's not such a bad idea now. But I do got a new movie coming called Culture Clash. Like, I don't really do a lot of reality TV, but I got, like, 11 new films about to drop. Yeah, really dope. Did you write these films? Or no, you just um, no, some of them, like, I worked on, I was able to produce on. But a lot of them, like, they just hired me to be in. But... You can go on IMDB.com and check out all of it. Like, I got at least like 10 projects dropping between now and like 2020. You worked with the Grace before. You worked with Eddie Murphy and I think Cuban Gooding Jr. Yes, sir. What advice did they give you? And Beyonce as well. Um, what did you take from them on set? I didn't really get to chop it up Beyonce like that. Um, like I wanted to. <laughs> like I wanted to. You know what I'm saying? But, um, <laughs> but now, nah, but um, Cuba was dope. You know what I'm saying? Me and Cuba. We shot dice together. That was cool. Um, I think um, me and Vivica got cool when I did a, did a, a project with Vivica. Who else? Me and my Epps got cool when I did Fighting Temptation with them. So, you know, I just I kicked it with a couple of them, but 
you know, I just, I wasn't really, um, I want to say advice. It was more just kicking it, you know. Oh, the OJs gave me some advice, like the older people. Older people really gave me advice. The younger people, we just hung out. You know what I'm saying? What did the OJ tell you? I'm OJ is just like, man, just put your money up. You know what I'm saying? Put your money up. Make sure you make sure you do shows. Like, make sure you make your show tight. Like, the older people, like 112 taught me, like, to make sure I had a good show. Like, because no matter what, if you have a good show in the game, like, you can stay on the road forever. That's true. You know what I'm saying? Like, most of these artists that got hit songs and they ain't got no shows, that's why you don't really see them a lot. Because when you got a hit show... You could perform old songs for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Like think about them old R and B acts or them old like rap acts that still be on the road, like Naughty by Nature, or whatever. The legends, like that's because they got great shows. So I try to like work on my show, and make sure I give a great performance. Anything else you want your friends, your sorry fans, know um, about this upcoming project? This upcoming project, you know what I'm saying? I work real hard on it. You know what I mean? Um, I got a lot of surprises on it for y'all. I ain't really give away all my features because I don't really want y'all to focus on the features. I want you to get the record and then be surprised at who you hear on it because I'm definitely taking a, um, taking a risk with it. It's dope. Um, I'm on the road right now doing a Weed Lady tour, um, Life I Live tour coming up. Um, what else? I got my my Twitter, my social media is L I L Z A N E S World spelled out Lil Zane's World. I'm on Facebook, Lil Zane. You know what I mean? Just keep up with me. I got movies coming out. I got TV shows in the works. Blessed, blessed, blessed. And um, just know I appreciate them rocking with me for so long. Cause like you said, twenty years in the game, you still can do shows and you still can, you know, what I'm saying pull up anywhere and people always show you love. Like I think that's dope. You know that what I'm is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for sitting down with us. And we're thank excited you. to hear your new single, We Lady. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. I'll make sure I go get that 420, We Lady. Yeah. <laughs>